Welcome to Porosity and Permeability Lab. You will have six stations and we will demonstrate each station here. This is station one with Russ and we're looking at large mixed gravels. So in this type of situation, as we pour in our uh, set amount of water, we'll time it for 20 seconds and you're gonna notice that a majority of the water will pass through the spaces between these large clasped, clasped being C-L-A-S-T-S. -S. And some will get retained within the porosity or openings, pore spaces of these rocks like right here. So as you kind of go through the experiment with us, you're gonna see that we're gonna measure it. We'll take the sample out now and we will measure out what water has come through. And when we do, it's substantial amount, like almost the same amount that we put in. So let's take a peek and we will see that we have approximately 190 milliliters and we put in 200 milliliters. So we'll be moving on to sample or station two, which has a different type of media. In this station, we'll be looking at small mixed gravels of all sizes, small meaning pebble size or smaller, and we'll be putting in the same amount of water for the same 20 second period time frame, starting the timer, you can see Russ putting in the water of course, we pre-measured out water in each station, and we'll measure the amount that comes out in just a second. So notice that the spaces between the grains are much smaller here, and that's gonna restrict the flow of water through the material. So as we do this, we'll test out and see how much water we got. Just looking at the bucket there, it's going to be substantially less, which means that more water was captured. And when we did the experiment, it was literally, it was around um, uh, 10 to 20 milliliters of water. We're going to be moving on to station three, and this is medium mixed gravel. So now we have class size that is much bigger than sand, and um, so you have some cobbles, uh, small ones, and pebbles. And we're gonna be putting in the same 200 milliliters of water and timing it for the same 20 seconds. So as we're pouring it in, in station three, we'll see how much goes through. So in mixed gravels, oftentimes there's odd uh, arrangement of spaces allowing for some of the water to get captured. And indeed, that's what we'll see here as we pull this material out. You'll see there's still water in the bucket. So some came through, actually all the way through the material, which would be just like nature. Water can penetrate downwards through rock material and soil layers. And we're going to measure out just how much we get before we move on to the next sample. And it looks like we have uh, the, almost the full amount came through, or it's actually 100 and... Uh, between 175 and 190 milliliters of water. So only about 10 to 15 milliliters was retained. So as lots pass through. That would indicate more permeability. All right, this is clay, and this station's kind of tricky because this is a spaghetti drainer, obviously, and so there's some empty spots, uh, little cavities where water can get out. So Russ is going to pour very carefully in the middle since the grain size is so tiny, there's only place for water to really sponge together and it will just kind of absorb into that clay material and very minimal amounts of it will pour through. So if any does, it's going to be coming through the spaghetti strainer openings, which you can see how the water is ponding on top of the clay. You can see some water may come out, but again, the water is, uh, what it did come out was simply because of the strainer. So this would have a very high porosity, not high permeability. Let's move into station five, and this is sand. Station five is going to be a mixture of various size grains of sand, and we'll put in the same 200 milliliters of material. 
and water that is and see how the water either freely flows through the material or is captured partly by the material. So in rock material in the ground, groundwater oftentimes is captured very well in uh, sandstone units that are fairly mature sandstones that allow for the water to sit between the grains. And so we're going to measure and see what happened, how much water actually came through. And when we look at this tray in just a second, you'll see that Russ has just like nominal amounts of water, uh, less than 10 milliliters, just a few drops. In reality, station three would have performed better than station five, but both of these are exhibiting really good porosity and low permeability. That moves us into our last station, station six, which is mixed sand and small gravels. And so you'll see a little bit of gravel material and then just a hodgepodge sizes of sand. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to pour in 200 milliliters of water and see what station six performs in terms of the ability of water to pass through. So the whole point of porosity and permeability is to understand that permeability is the uh, characteristic of these geologic materials to allow water to travel through a rock into groundwater as opposed to porosity that just stores it. So when Russ picks up the material, you'll see we got some water in there. Let's, we're going to measure and see how much we've got left. It is not a whole bunch, but it's certainly more than stations uh, four and five performed, but not too much better. So I'd say this has a high porosity. So now that you've done all the stations, I think that you can guess that stations with larger grain sizes had higher permeability and those with smaller grain sizes had uh, higher porosity. Thank you, and we appreciate your time on this lab. Bye.